I want to welcome everybody. I want to welcome everybody in. I want to thank everybody for having patience with me. First and foremost, I see a comment in the chat room. Let me just go to the comment section and see. Broderick, how are you? Let me get a sound check. Let me get a sound check. I want to know if it's crisp and right in your ear or it somewhat sounds a little bit across the room. We don't want that across the room sound tonight because I'm going to share it tonight. I'm going to get down tonight and it's going to be probably an hour or so, right? The reason being is because I started some artwork and I'm going to record another segment that is in that laid back style that you like. Many of you like have you've shared that with me, so I'll continue to do that and just work on other social media um, activities. And that's for tonight. Well, what happened was when I didn't do a live stream yesterday and let me know if the sound is crisp, not kind of away on the side of the room because I've been trying to get this thing tweaked the best way I can. So let me know how the sound sounds. So you're supposed to be radio quality. Well, the last few days over the weekend, when me and Brother Ison did our show, many of you know that I pretty much stayed up all night after that. Mrs. Skurve and I went around and did some shopping, came back, and um, I stayed up until 5 o'clock that Sunday afternoon. I got a little bit of sleep and jumped up again for Monday. And my sleep has been off. So last night into today, I only had two hours of sleep. I went to bed at the crack of dawn, slept for two hours, and I woke up. My body is real off right now. So that's why I missed yesterday. I didn't want to push it and not feel up to it. And then today we ran crazy. And when I came in, the lights were out, the power was off. So I said, you know what? This is a curse. So I laid down a little bit. Lights came back on. I said, okay, bet. We're going to get it in tonight. You know? So that's where I stand. So I'm not falling apart or some people, are you okay with your mental health? Are you? No. It's just that we're juggling a lot with the construction of the house, picking things out, getting stuff. Got to go back tomorrow. That's why I said I'm going to get this in tonight. And tomorrow will be also a good day because I'll be on top of things as soon as I get back in, just like I am right now across the board. Just want to explain because, you know, people start rumors and stuff like that. Somebody said to another friend of mine out here that they saw me in a bar drunk, you know, talking about. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. Are you serious? Come on, black people. Y'all got to think better than that. You know what I mean? I mean, last year when I did a pool party video with some very gorgeous and pretty and shapely young ladies, all the rumors started. Come on, y'all. I'm not going to stop doing a favor for somebody just because there's some young, voluptuous, beautiful, shapely women in bikinis around me. That's reality. Come on. Where's Mrs. Skurve? I don't see her. I, I, I think they ain't together no more. She was in America. I couldn't say that. It would leave me as a target here for whatever. I'm not dumb. I'm not fearful. I'm not going to put that business out there like that. The people in the know were in the know. They knew. Right? Brother Kwame, welcome on in. How is the sound? Is it clear, crisp, or is it kind of like sounding across the room kind of thing? Let me know because I can't, you know, listen to myself. I can put the um, phone on in here, but it'll give me a little echo. I wanted to talk tonight about what we have to go through in the United States of America and what most people do not know. And I have to say this because on many occasions, being here in Accra, Ghana, there are many brothers who may know me from social media, or just see that I may not have been born and raised there because of my accent, whatever. Okay, thank you so much, Broderick. Thank you so much. Um, they figured out, well, this guy's a brony, foreigner, right? But I'm a black man, see? So that's the way it is. Okay, let me see something here. Oh, yes, much love to you. <laughs> uh, much love to you also. Always, over and above. 
Okay, I'm going to log out on the computer, my WhatsApp, but I have it right here on my phone and I will be watching it. So whoever wants to send me a message discreetly, if they have anything to say about the show or anything, you can send, send it to me on WhatsApp. And if you're not connected to me on WhatsApp, come on, y'all. Y'all know the number, 407-590-0755. It's either Lance Skirv or Lance Skirvin, but you'll see the logo pop up. And we need to be connected on WhatsApp. Keep each other up to date on what's going on. Yes, it really surprises me when I speak to brothers here and abroad, even in different countries of those who have not gone to America to visit or to live or whatever, that they have these preconceived notions that this place is heaven on earth. But yet and still, you see how many people from over that side of the world, not even just America, the U.S., but Canada and all through the Caribbean. Now, we all know what's going on in the world, that we're at the brink of war, but we have already started the war on so many different levels. So whatever goes down, it won't go down the way we think it will go down because it's also a mental chess match. But the tensions all over the world are at an all-time high. And it's almost like a child who did something really bad. And I'm not talking about a toddler. I'm talking about maybe somebody 11, 12 years old who gave the grandmama the finger when she came to visit. <laughs> something answered her back the wrong way, which is not proper. But the parents caught wind of it. And that child knows that it's in for some discipline. If I say it the wrong way, they're going to say I advocate child abuse. Look, I got some ass whippings in my life and it made me a better person because of it. You know, this timeout stuff that others do. Okay, little uh, Jason, let's let's have a timeout. Let's just have a timeout and, and let's let's work this out. And little Jason is seven years old, but 10 years old, little Jason is shooting up daggone schools. And they say that about us in so-called hoods and black neighborhoods in America. It doesn't mean that black people just live, live in hoods. We do, do have some communities left. They're diminishing, but we have a lot of neighborhoods. And hoods is a short word for neighborhood. But it's usually out of frustration, usually out of lack of opportunities, usually out of things that are crucial in that community from being there, especially many of our fathers, the nuclear family proper education, proper nutrition. So before I go into that, I just want to pull it back and just take our time and go through this. That so many of us don't know what goes on in America and the kind of constant stress that is on you that you do not feel right away. You do not feel right away. You go by a piping hot stove and put your hand on it real quick. You say, oh, it didn't burn me. It just felt a little warm, but I can tell it's hot. No, you can't tell anything about hot. You better keep your hand on it until you know what hot is. So a little two week vacation in America, even a month, it's not gonna tell you what it's really like because you're not living there. It's the same way. When you live in a very cold place and you have to take out the garbage and you're in your warm home and you don't bother to bundle up and put gloves and put a, a winter coat on and winter boots and heavy jeans and snorkel up, you know, all cover your face up with that little Jason mask or that little pullover mask, right? Nah, I'm just going out there for a quick second. I'm just going to take out the garbage. It's not far from my house. It's on the side of my house or maybe it's outside of the apartment building where we throw the garbage and I can run back in. I'm not going to be out there long enough to feel the cold. So you run out there and go, Ooh, it's chilly. But let that door lock behind you and you stay out there for an hour or two in that little T-shirt, them little shorts and them little slippers with no socks. And you tell me how it feels. You're like, this is freezing out here. What? Oh, my God. Big difference. 
So in order to give a proper assessment of a situation, you have to live there, not observe the cherry picked videos that you pick from on YouTube and Facebook to say, oh, it's not that bad. You're going to tell me. And I did 57 and a half out of my 60 years in America. I say it that way because it's like a penitentiary. You know, I did 57 and a half years up in Sing Sing. I did 57 and a half years in a maximum security uh, a facility. <laughs> well, I did 57 and a half years in that mental ward called the USA. The one that so many see images, feel good images on YouTube and they want to go. I was with an Uber driver earlier today, me and Mrs. Skurv, and I sat in the front and I was talking to him. She sat in the back. She knows I want to get into a conversation. So the guy was a nice guy. Of course, I'm going to joke with the brother. We had a good conversation. And he says, why do you want to come here to live and leave America? I said, why would I want to stay there? Because instead of me giving the reasons why I want to be there and here, which I love and trust and believe, you got major issues out here. So I'm not going to sugarcoat it. But if I had to pick one, I'll take this. Even they may not have all of the amenities and all night Walmarts and Targets and, and all, you know, you got to get your stuff before a certain time. And there's still places that are here open 24 hours, but you have to know how to get them. This is a big place. But I have acclimated here excellently. Because wherever you put me, I know how to live. But not everybody is like that. Not everybody is like that. So you dream of, I'm not saying, when I say you, I'm not saying anybody here in the chat room. I'm not being personal with anybody who's listening to it now or in the future, but I'm making it sound personal so it hits harder. That's my style. So you sit here and you romanticize about this place. And I'm going to use a Ghanaian example because I was speaking to the cab driver today it could be somebody from uh, South, um, South Africa. Now, pretty much their complaints would be a little different because that's a place that feels uh, like the USA in many aspects. And all the racism is there big time. They may say on paper certain things are gone, but it's there in the power structure of those who are in power who oppress the people who look like you and me. So don't think you just go there for a hot minute and say, I love South Africa. I'm not saying they hate it, but it's pretty much similar to what goes on in America, right? But it can be Gambia. It could be Tanzania. It could be Kenya. It could be any one of these places where the people think that to go west is the best thing that they can do. No, to stay where you are and build with others is the best thing that you can do. Because there's so many factors. You got, and I'm going to read off something here that I jotted down. Racism and discrimination. Black people have faced sy systemic racism throughout American history, including slavery, segregation, and ongoing ra racial bias. They often experience racial discrimination in education, employment, housing, and the criminal justice system. These disparities can limit their opportunities and contribute to social and economic inequality. Do you want to go somewhere like that? Do you want to go somewhere like that? But you see this kumbaya multicultural, we all can hold hands together. And many of those who are here don't think I'm going to drop fire on, on America. But I'm going to do it to some of those here. Some of those here in the motherland. There's so much behind the worship of the white Jesus, which I had to explain to this Uber driver today. Because he was pointing out as we drove, because I'll say it, we drove in the Spintex area. You have a lot of uh, 
building places there where they sell doors and security systems and solar panels and lights. And so this is the vibe me and Mr. Skirt were on today because we were just looking over things that pretty soon we're going to have to be getting as the icing on the cake of our project. So he was saying all of this, and I told him, I said, look at all of these houses of worship. Yes, my brother, Jesus is coming soon. I said, when? Oh, we know not the hour. I said, well, let me ask you something. If you ran a business and you hired somebody, and for three days there was a no call, no show situation with them. What would you do? Would you keep saying, oh, that employee is coming? And I understand that they say that he's going to come like a thief in the night. That's not the point. Every other race of people on the planet, no matter what they claim to be, their belief, their faith, their religion. Guess what? They're not sitting down in their ass doing nothing, looking up at the sky. Working hard under an oppressor that looks like the one that they worship so much and love so much and call God and bringing their money to a church. So this thing called religion has made you bow down to people who don't look like you, who couldn't give a damn about you. If they're not using you to break your back, to make them money, to exploit you, after hours and behind closed doors, they're using you like objects of pleasure. And I told him, I said, if I walked up to you, brother, and you didn't really know me, and I said, brother, I'll give you my license as proof. I'll give you my national ID card as proof to hold on to this. I need half of the money that's in your pocket. There's something I got to do that's dire over there at the mall, and I'll be right back. Matter of fact, hold all the bags of things I purchased. So what's in there is worth more pretty much than what you have in your pocket. Oh, brother, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, brother. I don't know. It's nothing, nothing illegal. No, there's nothing illegal. If you don't see me come back in 30 minutes, everything in there, hundreds of dollars or CDs in there, it's yours. But I need to get that money because I have no money on me. I'll bring it back to you. Plus more. No, brother, I cannot do that. And I told him, if some slender looking a uh, white man with the trim beard and looking like what they say Jesus looked like, you know, that little gay guy that posed with a painting of what Jesus looks like. If it was him that came and said, brother, I need all the money in your pocket. Before he said pocket, it'll be in his hands because of the way that he looks and the way that your mind has been indoctrinated to trust them, to honor them. So what's the purpose of religion for you? Is it because it's something good? Well, if it's good, you wouldn't be disliking Nigerians as a Ghanaian. Not all, but many. And Nigerians would not be not liking you and you'll see each other as black brothers and sisters. But you see, you see each other as a nationality. Who made these imaginary lines carving up the motherland? So you're not right in the head if you did go to America because you can't get along with those here because of nationality. What is that? It's one big landmass and we're all black. But it's carved up, leaders compromised. Not doing anything for you for the most part. There are some. But the majority of them are tied up under that person that looks like that Jesus that you worship so much. So they got you tied up in politics and religion. Ain't that something? But you still want to go to America. You want to jump from in the pan right into the damn fire. And you can't see. You're like the snake charmer. Right. Or you're, you're running behind the snake charmer and you the snake. And you look at these videos and what do you hear from America? 
And you the snake and you just you're not going to bite nobody. You just want to gravitate toward that music and follow behind the snake charmer and lead yourself right in the slaughter. Let me read another one. Economic inequality. Black people on average have lower household incomes, higher unemployment rates and less accumulated wealth compared with their white counterparts, limited access to quality education, job opportunities, and discriminatory practices contribute to this wealth gap. So with all of these things going against you, I'm not saying it's impossible. Like I said, there's always that corn that hasn't been popped in a bag of popcorn when put in the microwave. It got out in the original form that it came in, but it's very few it's very few. With these things going against you, why can't you build here? Well, the economy is bad. It's messed up. Well, show more unity and show more sacrifice. Execute more sacrifice. If you can't do it in a year, do it in five. Get together with your brothers out here. You driving a taxi. Get five other brothers who are driving a taxi and pledge to put some money together to get some land. Pledge to put some money together to get an architect and draw up some plans, get some cinder blocks, get the materials a little bit at a time. And you mean to tell me that you can't build a place where all five of you can live rent free and you continue to build it into an Airbnb? And you take the other money that comes out of that and you now start to build smaller homes for all of you where the pressure to earn money is less because you have no rent and no mortgage. But no, you want to have that brand new iPhone. No, you want to show out. And this is a, these are people on both ends of the spectrum in America and in the motherland. But I'm speaking a little bit more on those in the motherland here who talk about going to America like it's going to change their lives. Oh, it'll change your life. But will it change your mentality? And it would change that too. Unless you come from a family of money, unless you have something saved up, unless you have people over there who know the deal in a household system that you could join on to. A young lady came to me. She says, oh, you're from America. I need to go there. I said, why? Why would you want to go there? Well, I want to get some work. I want to go there and work. I said, well, where would you like to go? I'd like to go to New York. I said, oh, God, when will they ever learn? When will <laughs> where is all the common sense gone? Oh, my God. I said, listen, I understand your need. And I said, what skills do you have? Well, I was looking to take care of somebody. Oh, like a living job. I said, that's not bad. But please make it a living job where you live there seven days a week, but you have two days off. Or even if you depend on the pay, you have one day off, but you have your private space. After a time, you're free. You got to be free. You're not paying any rent because you know what? Rent and mortgage over there will kill you. I don't care what you're making. If you want to get rent somewhere in a poorer neighborhood where you can afford it, doesn't have to be poor now, but it's not going to be the most pristine. You may have a commute that's so far away and long. I've known people to work in Westchester County. Those who are from that area know that's a little more affluent, a whole lot more affluent. And they have people who come from places like Brooklyn or Queens and a lot from Brooklyn and a lot from neighborhoods that are not so desirable, but that's all they can afford. So guess what? They have to spend money to go up to that job in Westchester, even if it's a living job. And the money that they pay for rent in Brooklyn and certain neighborhoods in Brooklyn, all oh, Brooklyn's not bad. You got some very nice communities in Brooklyn, but you go in there as a single woman, right? And now you're going to have to pay for eight days of living outside of that place. Best you live in there seven days a week. Because now you have to get your food. 
You can't get too much because it may spoil by the time you come back the next week. You have a place there unless you share it with other people. I didn't mean to get into detail like that, but I wanted to throw a few things out there for people who may not know. And to know that that rent is going to slash what you earn. So you may make a lot, but guess what? It's going to be spent a lot because you got to pay a whole lot of money. And I know I lived there. I grew up there. But I grew up in that atmosphere and say that atmospheric pressure of living there, which wasn't pressure at all for me because that's all I knew. So like the baby Superman, what's his name? Kalel from Krypton when the father sent him up in the ship when it was about to blow the planet up and he came to earth with superpowers. Well, coming from some, such a place like that, that was normalcy for me with so much pressure around me, so much crime around me, the hustles around me, the need to have to work and juggle and know how to budget and do all of this stuff. When I came to other places that were easier, I was I was like, I feel like Superman. I feel like Superman. I'm thinking quicker. I have the ability to work hard, sacrifice, hellified work ethic. Pfft, ain't no problem to move over to the motherland. I'm not putting it down because there are challenges when you move here, but it's a whole lot easier moving over here than leaving here and going to America. And then you pick New York City too. Let me get to another one here. It's not too many. Education disparities. Black students often face disparities in the quality of education they receive. Unequal funding, segregated schools, and biased disciplinary practices contribute to lower academic achievement and higher dropout rates. These disparities can limit future opportunities and perpetuate the cycle of inequality. Okay, you might already have your education or you may not be interested in that. But if you plan to live there for good, you know you're going to have children. Maybe you plan not to. But for those who plan to have children and you go to a place where you don't know the ropes, you're going to need somebody to teach you that. And if you go there now and try to wing it, it can be disastrous. I mean, you can have a child coming up they're new there. They're going to grasp it better because if you go out there with them being young, they can grasp it a little better. But imagine you send your child, he's a preteen, walking to school. They get bullied or catch a stray bullet or turn up missing. So many things can happen or they get caught up in drugs. And I mean, there are many people living there. They understand what goes on. And nine times out of 10, nothing's going to happen to them. But do you want to push those odds when you don't know the ropes? Understand? It's like the old roach in the new kitchen. The old roach came from next door. He just found himself outside and it started raining. And so he was closer to this next house. And there's a little crack on the door. Well, let me get away from the rain there. Ah, I smell some food. Let me walk up into this kitchen. Let me climb up on this refrigerator and jump down on the counter. Well, the lights are out. The old roach do doesn't matter. He goes by his senses and he sees other roaches chilling. They looking at him. OK, roaches don't really fight. But then the owner of the home comes home and switches the light on and peeling all the roaches that know the ropes. They go to where they go. And here's the old roach in the new kitchen, not knowing the cracks and crevices to hide in and get sprayed, swept to the ground and either stomped because he didn't know. And that's how I compare it. Next one is health disparities. African-Americans, which I call American Africans, have higher rates of certain health conditions such as hypertension, diabetes and obesity. Limited access to quality health care, racial bias and medical treatment and socioeconomic factors contribute to these disparities. Mental health issues are also prevalent, 
with American Africans often facing barriers to assessing mental health services and experiencing higher rates of stress and trauma due to racism. See, these are things that if you don't feel it and you can't imagine it, it's a thing on your mind. It's a thing on your psyche. It's something that you can feel and you can see it when it's attacking you. But it's a psychological thing that weighs over you because you're braced for it. And just like the child that I forgot to finish that story, I'm ranting all over the place that gave the middle finger to the grandmother. And now the parents he knows is going to give him a whipping. He's in his bed. The parents are slowly walking up the steps to the second floor of that house. And he's sitting there. Oh, my God. I know I'm going to get it now. I know I'm going to get it now. And he's braced for it. The parents just walk right on past his room door and go to bed. But then 4.30 in the morning after he relaxed, thinking that he missed a butt whipping, the door snatches open quick and he gets it. And he remembers it and he doesn't want to feel that torment and that frustration and an anticipation of something that's going to happen. See, so there's this anticipation of things happening. It's just like when I got beat down by 11 police officers, which really made me to be more of who I am now than anything else in my life. Every time police got behind me, it wasn't like I was scared. You take a butt whipping from 11 grown men (laughs) with with gloves on, punching you, pulling your nuts and got you in the chokehold that killed other people and break trying to break your fingers off. There's not any one man who's going to bring that fear on you. I ain't Superman. I can catch another butt whipping. Right. But two, three. eh, Bring it. Bring it. I've been through worse. But there was the anticipation of having to relive that as in post-traumatic stress disorder, which I don't have to go to a doctor to have them to tell me that. Do I want that? No, but I already know what I went through and other things and other episodes that I went through after that for something seemingly innocent or normal. So I'm the captain of paranoia. (laughs) I make it serve me. I make it serve me. Now, I'm in the zone right now. I have not been looking into the chat room, so please don't think I'm ignoring anybody. I just want to get into a zone and put this out there and go into my little world. I'm going to acknowledge everybody in a little while. So don't think that I'm not or I'm ignoring you. I just wanted to zone because yesterday, since I didn't get a chance to do a show because of so much that I had to do and, and not sleeping and crashing and all this stuff. Oh, man, it's crazy. But yeah, like I said, Black people living in America should all be crazy, but we're not. We've acclimated. We're tough. We have the spiritual wherewithal. We have the mental fortitude. We have the spiritual connectedness. And that's the only reason why those of us who can navigate in that shark infested system can survive. Do we feel it? Sure we do. It all doesn't mean we have to leave there because our situations are different. And sometimes we have to leave there mentally while physically being there, have that place of escape, know what it is, set your parameters and know within how to operate and don't let anybody violate those boundaries. Look over your kids, your children, teach them the real deal and understand that You're going to have to do that because they're not always going to be around you, especially as they get older and older. Now, I didn't look in the chat room in depth, but I want to give much props to Sister Master Glam for doing right by her children and being strong and being there for them and putting them first and being that general which doesn't mean you have to be just a man to be a general. No, she is. She's running things and she's doing it right and beautifully. And I applaud her, especially at her age, which is around half my age. But you have women who are much older than them, than her, that
will do the same thing, whether I know your situation or not. And especially also the brothers out here who are doing it, single and or together, right? Situations are different, but for those who I tip my hat to, no matter what, you follow through with what it is that you have to do in that place called America, because that's the toughest place in the whole world to live in. You may have pockets of affluence where they kind of shield and, and, and wall off certain things from happening. But that's only just a matter of time, because like I tell everybody, you go to America and you see some very nice neighborhoods, gated communities. There's a spot in central Florida. I can't. Is it? Is it? Is it? Not Orlando, but Mrs. Skurve had some extra jobs that she did with some very affluent people that um, I won't say their names because she knows them personally and I get a lot of insight from what I know about them, truly. And I'll say this, although those gated communities, oh, I, I got to say this again. There's a house. There's a, there's a mansion, actually, that has where you have to pass a guard. And they have to lift up the divider for you to go in. And you drive down this road just a little bit. And there's another one. And this is just for one house. I believe there's only one residence there. The name is very popular. I've been there. And it's crazy what you know what goes on in the inside. Now, I'm not saying that place. And in the way I am, I'm just kind of saying it. Check it out. You think you go to the Paramore neighborhood in Orlando, which is close to downtown, right? You go down there, you go down Central Avenue where you have the homeless shelter. I used to drive there for many, many years. So I know not only the streets, but I know many people right there right now that if I was to show up there with a camera, you'd be surprised. Yo, Scurf, what's up, man? Where you been? Or they call me 21 because they used to drive the 21 bus route all the time. And that's one of the most challenging um, routes you ever want to see. Nobody wants to do that route, but I never had a problem on it. But those gated, affluent communities, um, where was it that Tiger Woods lived? That, that is where I'm talking about in Shaq and all of them. That's the place that I'm talking about. All of them places. You got just as much crack and cocaine and, and, and methamphetamines. Oh, weed is nothing. <laughs> up in those, there's all kind of weed up in there. But you got some of the harshest drugs from people who have their own connects, who may live in the poor neighborhoods, but drive on over there and drop off the package for a month worth of these drugs. We're the poor little crackheads. They have to come around four and five times a day to get their hit because you have some sisters out there on Orange Blossom Trail who are prostituting themselves. Anybody from Orlando come and tell me, I know what I'm talking about. I lived there for a long time. And then once they turn a trick, they run to the crack man, come back and turn another one and they run their lives down. So while you may go, to the downtrodden neighborhoods and say, oh, God, this place is terrible. These people are filthy and terrible. They are no different than the ones that are behind the gated communities in the affluent parts of Orlando. Windermere, yeah. And there's another part of Windermere that's even more affluent. Those names are slipping me because they're not important to me. But do you think it's just Central Florida and Orlando, Florida? No. This is the way it goes across the country. But you who want to go there, who think it's heaven on earth, wouldn't know that. You who go there who don't know it would see some of your own black people in the downtrodden poor neighborhoods, oppressed neighborhoods, and say, what is wrong with these people? They are lazy there. And see some of the white folks over there love that. That's why they'll hire you and make you supervisors first on those jobs because you don't know how they do us. And you look down on your own who you will thinking in a nationalistic way. Well, I am Ghanaian. I, I'm not American. I'm here to work. And the Americans are lazy. They're, they're this and that. And there are some who commit crimes that need to be locked up for a long time. I'm not going to give everybody a pass because you're black. But know what you're stepping into. Because like I said, black people living in America should all be crazy by now. And most of them are not. They're just circumstances that 
calls us to be a certain way. You'll do just about anything under certain circumstances. And then you have nothing but bad food in your neighborhood, food deserts. Well, what do you mean by that, Scurve? Well, to get good quality food, if you don't have a car, you're going to have to walk a long way or pay a cab or take a bus to get the quality food. And a lot of people just say, oh, forget it. Let me get this sugary, salty, fried up, oily, high blood pressure causing diabetic, causing heart disease, causing food because it's seasoned up so much more. And I'm so stressed. I need something like that. So you start to get vices. If not on a culinary level, you get it as far as an escapism level. And oftentimes it might be about getting high. Might be about getting high. And you don't want to go there. And you think you can't? We are superstars in this chat room who haven't fallen that way. And maybe some of us secretly have, but you have beat it. So there's so many things in America to overcome. And people say, well, it's not just black people. But listen, in that society, who's looked at as lower than us? Right. I'm not saying I am lower. I'm looking at the beast like he's lower because I'm the closest thing to Superman that you ever seen. And all of you here in the chat and a lot of you who are watching it right now silently and in the future will see it. Pat yourself on the back that that system didn't tear you up. Pat yourself on the back when you still have your sense of mental well-being, not even just getting by but knowing the game and walking past the minefields that are set up for you to fail. Even when some family members that you may have have fallen victim in this war of living in America, you are still here. I've got to be strong. There's only one of me. I have a brother who has a different father, so we can say it's a different lineage, but he's struggling on drugs all his life. That makes me stronger, not because I'm happy that he's there, but it's me now. I've got to be strong. I can't fall victim. And, and, and out of the two children that came out of my mother's womb, all of a sudden I'm a failure too, and fall victim to these th things too. And I understand a lot of reasons why he went that way. I'm not saying he's a failure, but he has enough brilliance inside of him to pull himself up and resources to pull himself up before my mother passed away. I can't worry about that right now. So all the greatness that comes down in my bloodline is going to funnel through me. I know my mission. I got to preserve myself. And this is not me saying this about me. This is me saying this about everybody who's here. That we got to preserve ourselves. We don't know in this war as soldiers in this war. And I do mean our sisters too. Who is going to get hit and knocked down? Bleeding profusely to say, listen. I love you all. Don't stop. Keep going. I'll be dead in three minutes. Don't risk yourself to be shot too. And they make a decision to keep moving and they look them in the eye in a way that says, I love you and I'm going to represent you. But I know you're out of here physically, but the spirit that you have lives on in me. You walk into something like that and you think it's utopia and you realize the many wars that you have fight. Let me read one more off. Criminal justice system. American Africans are disproportionately impacted by the criminal justice system. They are more likely to be arrested, receive harsher sentences, and experience racial profiling. This contributes to mass incarceration and the perpetration per, uh, yeah, perpetration, I'm sitting here tongue-tied, right? <laughs> of the cycle of poverty and limited opportunities. So imagine, again, you go over to America and raise some children and they're in the wrong place at the right time. Yeah, they may not be babies. And I say children, they could be teenagers, early 20s. Their nose is clean. Their life is clean. You're one in a million. And they get locked up and you get that phone call. And now you get a chance to see that never ending bottomless abyss of the criminal justice system and how cold it can be, how ruthless it can be, how predatory it can be. 
I can't say that I've been to the bottom of the system, but working as a corrections officer in jails and prisons, I've seen it, tasted it, and smelled it. I've seen how some of the officers treat some of the, those that they call inmates. I see how some of the public defenders, right? Those are the lawyers that don't give a damn about you because they give you that lawyer for free, especially if you can't afford a lawyer of your own. And here you are raising your children and you don't have any extra money for these high priced lawyers. So you let a public defender defend and they sell your child out. Well, I let them take the misdemeanor now and do a little couple of weeks in prison, uh, uh, not prison, but jail. No, you don't want that for them. Your child is just a statistic and the things that they see in there and have to deal with in there with others who should be there. Like, again, I said, because you're black, I'm not going to give you a pass. If you rape little babies, if you kill grandmothers, if you do certain things. Uh, uh If you catch somebody in the bed with your woman and you snuff one of them, well, I can't get too mad at you. If you got 10 children at home and they're hungry and you stuff a steak or two in your pants to walk out with, I'm not going to come down too much on you. I'm going to say, hey, let's look to get you some work. But every situation is different. But there are situations that are so bad off where you have people who are locked up for doing the crime, but they also have mental health issues that haven't been unearthed yet because they will separate those with mental health issues if they're there. But what about the spiritual issues? What about the addictions? What about the sexual uh, 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 drives and and kinks that these people have for other men and other young men. You in a cell, four of you, and your son is in there, and he shouldn't be in there. So why does he have to see the next man giving another man a blowjob and taking it up the ass? Why does he have to see this? And the smell that comes out of that why does he have to smell that? Why does he have to feel that he's threatened that the next night it might be him in that position and there's nobody who gives a damn about him? You see how deep this thing can go and how it screws up your mind? You can't sleep at night. Mommy, you know what I saw? They call you on the phone and they're telling you this stuff. Do you want that? Now that can happen here. It can happen anywhere. But there? Where that system is predatory to get us locked up at the slightest thing, you don't want that. Like I said, black people living in America should all be crazy. But guess what? We're not all crazy. We're strong. And those of us who have fallen victim, we have to be strong for them. And for those who have fallen into the traps, we got to understand that they have family that are suffering. You can't, oh, it's just him suffering. No, they're at home, on edge, pins and needles, driving them crazy, sucking down their resources. Because it's not just about locking black people up. Lock them up so we can get the resources from the family for all of the transactions that have to be done while they're incarcerated. That's why there's so much big money in prison. Community violence. Some American Africans communities experience higher levels of crime and violence, poverty, limited economic opportunities and systemic neglect contribute to these issues. It is important to note that crime rates within the African American community. I said it backwards again because I've been saying it for so many years. So pardon me are often associated with socioeconomic factors rather than inherit characteristics of the community itself. I'm going to read off the last one and we're going to rant and we're going to cook for a little while longer. Political disenfranchisement. American Africans historically face significant barriers to voting and political representation. Although progress has been made, voter suppression efforts, gerrymandering and limited representation still exist, undermining the political power of American Africans, which that is a place I don't I don't care for the whole politic thing. The energy that most of us put into politics should be the energy that we put into each other to unify as a block, as a political block. That's the only way I'll play politics.
I'm not going to play politics where, well, I'm voting re uh, Republican and you're voting, re voting Democrat and all y'all black getting your votes messed up. If we come together as a block and say, listen, we're going to support you, but this is what you got to do for us. And you put your money together and you make them do. And if you don't, you vote them out. And this is what we want. In this four years, we're coming to you with our demands as a community. They do that for other communities. If you don't do it that way, don't come to me with no politics because we're not unified. We get into this thing and we argue about it just the same way they do in Jamaica, just the same way they do in Ghana. And nobody gets anything done because they're so distracted. And the people up top are crooks taking the money and living large and sending their kids to better schools, better hospitals. And you still stuck waiting for the next savior to come and save you at the voting block. No way. No way. It ain't going to happen that way. As far as I'm concerned. No way. So. Is it a wonder that we're not all crazy? We should be all crazy. The intangibles that we see or feel. Just this past weekend. At the Juneteenth celebration, there were several mass shootings. One in a certain part, was it Willowbrook? I don't know Chicago like that. So cor correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not even going to go and dig it up and make it a thing about that. I can do that on a separate, smaller video. But there were how many people shot? Maybe 24, 25, 26. One person killed. And there was another separate incident where five people or six people were shot and one killed. But on a, on a so-called black official holiday now, and we cut a fool like this, I'm not saying we have to wait and beg and, oh, we got a holiday. No, you make the holiday in your community. We shouldn't have to beg somebody else who doesn't look like us and they give us something, but they take stuff away. No, you make your community so sweet that it's blissful just to go home into your community. I remember many years ago, growing up in Queens, that when I walked home from PS 121, that's the elementary school right there on 109th Avenue, right? And 127th and 128th Street, we'd all walk home. And as soon as I walked out the door, the houses across the street from the school, we knew everybody. As we walked down the blocks there on 109th Avenue, before I turned up 134th Street, maybe we did a different way down 107th and, and every block. We knew all the houses because of the children that were in the school that lived there. And if you played with them on the weekend and if three or four of the houses didn't have children where you knew the people in the household because those neighbors did and those friends did, you got to know them, too. So there was a sense of community that as you walked home, you were safe. Ain't no car going to roll up on you to my hop in or try to grab you, whatever. And somebody's out there raking the leaves in their front yard and they're going to let that go on. See, now many of us, we're so fragmented and into the you get yours and I get mine thing that we go grab the camera to go put it up on social media. You see a man beating a woman down and you grab the camera. Now, lots of times in these dysfunctional relationships, you go to hold the man down till the cops come or beat the man down. She's going to take a knife or a baseball bat and hit you or try to stab you with it. Dysfunctional relationships. So all I'm saying is that with all of the social media and propaganda put out about the United States, you also have to see the homelessness. You also have to see the crime. You also have to see the fact that in law enforcement, you have many officers who are in white supremacist groups. That they're there to railroad you or kill you legally and get off with time or suspended with pay. And it goes on more so than just the high profile, you know, people all over here will talk about, yes, I heard about George Floyd. But for every George Floyd, you know how many people are killed? That night when they snatched me up, they could have killed me. They looked like they were damn sure trying to snap my neck. You see what I mean? If countless faceless people all over the country 
that never make it to the headlines because it's not a good enough story. For every one, George Floyd, countless thousands. And for those who survive, they're locked up. And again, I say there are people who may be of harm to the, the, the status of our community that do things and don't give a damn who deserve to be locked up. Demonically possessed people who are hell-bent on our destruction who look like you and me. Get them. But see, them cops ain't gonna mess with them too tough because they'll try to take their heads off. So for anybody looking to come to America, I'm not saying you can't make it, but ask yourself, why? Why are so many looking to get out and go elsewhere more and more? In 2019, they had the year of return and it really wasn't about us coming back. It was a commercial thing to boost up money. And they made lots of money. But for those who saw that that happened and took it the right way that it should be, even though it was a money thing, they made the trek. They had the courage. They did it. They focused. But I will say, many who come over are just as mentally damn sick as they were when they were in America. So just because a person comes from over in America or anywhere in the West and puts on Kenty cloth and a quaba and you got to check them out. I'm all for unifying with people, but I'm not going to sit here and connect with people with the same hangups and the same idiosyncrasies that they had in America, but want to dress it up a little bit, but you still want to gossip. You want to dress it up a little bit, but you still want to try to steal somebody's man. You want to dress it up a bit, but you're still looking for somebody to hustle from. You want to dress it up a bit, but you want to make yourself appear different here as though you're progressive, but you ain't shit. You ain't shit. You can put on the nicest clothes in the world and walk around in the club and doodle in your pants. You stinking. You grab up a dude and you slow dance with him. He, what the hell is that? Hmm, I smell shit. <laughs> Not only do you have to change your location, but you have to change your mind. Change your mind into something that is on an elevated level. If not, stay where you are and elevate your mind first. You'll be better off in America with an elevated mind than coming to Africa with the same old, same old, same old nigga business. Because I don't do the nigga business. Those who are out here, they can say what they want. I don't do the nigga business. There are no niggas in Africa, but there are niggas in this niggardly state of mind that is brought here that has caught on to some of those who are here. And I'm telling you the truth. You think I'm a lie to you? I'll do more videos. I'll walk out in the street. I'm going to do that soon. We've been real busy, y'all. Real busy. But that's not going to stop me from doing the right thing to show people what the real deal is on both sides. The oppressor got us all messed up. But there's only but so much he can do to us once we understand what has been done. And now we have to have the ability to sacrifice and the strength to turn away from the things that are glittery and shiny and red, the things that Negroes love. We got to get away from it. It's no good for us. Listen, I did say I'm going to record something different. This was a short one tonight. It was just a rant. I'm going to wrap it down. Now, I will say in another hour or so, I will go to the conference line because I can draw and sketch at the same time that I'm in the conference line. My hands are free and I can talk. I'm not going to go there right now. But if you did have a need to want to go and talk there, if, if not, you can wait around that time and keep on checking. I will be there to see if anybody's there. But you can call 321-521-2515. I will be there in about an hour, hour and 10 minutes because I'm going to, as soon as I'm done, I'm going to wet my whistle, run to the restroom, and I'm going to record something else that I have on my mind in that laid back style while I can. But this is what I want to do. 
I was going to record that first, then do the live. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do it this way first because you never know what can happen. The lights go out. I can still record because I have battery operated stuff. So I do want to get it in, keep the work going and keep the stimulation on our minds so that we don't fall into the traps that many, many people fall into. It's a very, very, uh, how can I do it or say it? It's not risky per se, but it's, it's, it, it's not easy. It's like tight roping between two high mountains on a windy day. And you got them shoes that feel like plastic on the bottom that slide and slip around when it rains. You just have to watch how you step each, every step of the way. But if you can team up with others who think like you progressively and are sincere and to just be friendly from where you are, sharing information, underground railroad style. That's what it's going to take. Our unity, our true unity, not this, we're going to unify as Americans who came to Africa. And yes, and whatever. Girl, did you, uh, who was that woman he was with? Girl, he did a pool party. Where was Mrs. Girl, no, I don't do that. I'll cuss your ass out just as fast out here and tell you to get away from me. At this point, especially at 60 years old, I have no time. See, if you're 20, 20 years go by, oh, I'm just 40. Me, I'm 80. No, I'm not wasting that time. And bust it. I'm going to be just as young then, if not younger, because I'm going to make sure to live a certain way and not have certain toxic energies around me, no matter who they are and how much kente cloth they wear. You see what I mean? It's about the mind. It's about the intent. It's about how you live. Oh, oh, oh she got her hair straight. She can't be right. Shut up. What about the brain under that? What about uh, how this person lives? Huh? It, it, it's all about the black family. It's all about our unity, no matter where we are, because we are people of this planet. And who am I to tell you to come to one part of the planet? If you do, I'll show you. But we, we are the original people of this planet. We go anywhere we want. We don't have to have validation, validation and ask anybody, what the hell? We got to have a visa and ask somebody to passport that we should be able to go free look what they did to the native americans got them all up on plantations drinking beating their wives i'm not putting them down but they have ghetto uh uh uh, uh actions going on over there so is it a wonder why we do the same thing too in our communities that's that unseen thing that some people want to say doesn't exist and some of us coons are like that i don't see color but they sh sh damn sure do and you got some of that, I don't see color. Well, let me move next door to you. I know soon I'm going to see that for sale sign on your front lawn. Get the hell out of here. Even when you lay with us at night, when you want us for your pleasure, you got to make sure that you way on the other side of town and we got to slip through the back door with our foolish selves. Come on now. Y'all know about that. You know, I know about that. I've told you so many things I've observed in this life. And I'm going to spit it all back. I don't care who thinks I'm too much or he's just, no, well, if you don't like it, go somewhere. You know, it's the truth. Go somewhere. I'm not going to say and bite my tongue and be like some old uh, uh, a subservient church elder who just glad to be alive and tip my hat. Oh, Brother Skirvin has been with us for 42 years. And we think, no, I'm, if I've been there that long and I ain't raising no hell and changing nothing, then I didn't do what I'm supposed to do. The hell with that order. I don't belong to no order other than the creator's order, other than nature's order, which, are high, which is the highest manifestation of the God force, the most hot, whatever you want to call it. We arguing over, 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 over categories. And you go to America and you get more, just as much pushback from people who look like you. Me and Mrs. Skurve went to a tile place. They sold jacuzzis. They showed, had a lighting section. Phenomenal. I'm not putting America down, but this stuff here was like, pff, this is some, this is some stuff. And there's a Muslim black woman sitting down and I could tell by her garb, she looked to be very distinguished, very classy. And I saw a man who was tall, who had Muslim garb on, garb on also, a black man also. He had his back turned, but I could figure and see that there was nobody else in the area and that they were together. And so Mrs. Skurve walked toward her and passed her. She was sitting down. The lady looked up at Mrs. Skurve. Mrs. Skurve said, hello. 
good afternoon. And you want to see the look on that woman's face of scorn. And, and I can't say hate, but it couldn't have been nothing else. She looked her up and down. And she's like, look at this woman. Here we are. I'm a black woman in a black country. She's a black woman in a black country. And you think I'd eat anything from her the way she looked at her? So you get that here also. You get that in America also big time. If you from the Pentecostal church and you talking to somebody who is Baptist, <laughs> what happened to the one God when you can have white folks go to church on a Sunday way back in the day and up to this time now, and they're descendants of those who lynched our people and they, they go and pray to God to our God bless America. But if, if, if you want God to bless you after the stuff that you've done, well, what kind of God do you worship? It ain't the one that I worship. And I'm not saying I worship in the traditional sense. I'm saying when I get grounded in the ground with bare feet and connected, looking up at the sun and eating natural foods, that's not who provides for me. That thing who tried to snuff me out and kill me, that, that we have nothing in common that way. So I'm not afraid to talk about the oppressor's punk ass religion. It does nothing for me. When the same people would turn around and want to lynch me and cut off my penis and cut off my fingers and cut off. And then people you saw in them pictures, they might be grandfathers to children now who are grown. And they sit around the dinner table and these people have these people in their family who die and they go inside their trunks and treasure chests. And then Ziploc bags got the souvenirs of a black man's dick. What kind of sickness is that? And they don't talk about it to blow it up? But I don't see color. Get the hell out of my face. Get the hell out of my face. You mean I'm going to lay in the bed and got 10 mosquitoes flying around me? One may have malaria. I'm going to kill all of them. Just because of that one. I'm going to get rid of all of them. There's no time to sit up here and try to sift through who is good and who is not. Because most of the time they, they say they shut up when it comes time to defending you. And don't tell me about no Black Lives Matter. You see how that turned out. You never saw me sitting up here pushing that foolishness. I knew what it was. And they're going to try with something again. But they're going to have to have something happen again. And they want to come better this time. They wanted to be a duplicate of the civil rights movement as far as the images are concerned. So that those 20 and 30 years coming up saying, oh, well, it's different than the civil rights movement because there were so many white people there. There were so many Jews there. There were so many Asians there. There were so many LGP. No, no. All of these people have gained from our struggle. And now they want to post up and, and have a photo op. And in the days of cell phones, you don't have to go to the the place to develop the film and that stuff, it can create a false revolution that makes some of us who are coming up lose the fire because now we think everybody, it's all inclusive. But they all love us. Look, look at the Black Lives Matter. Even the ones who ran it got rich, got money. Where'd the money go? Get money. <laughs> so listen, when you really be about it, it ain't going to be too many people around you like that. But you got to really be about it all the way through. And when you are, you're going to repel so many people away from you because you're not watered down and all inclusive and want to include. And, oh, yes, come in. No, if you're not me, I don't want you in no movement of mine. You can give me information. You can give me information and it better be good. If you in position and you want to help, you can give us information and we're going to test it. And if it's wrong or some trick, we're going to come back and get you. But other than that, we don't need anybody else in what we do. And we got to watch the ones who are in it. Because there's always an agent who they send, who hates what you're doing, who came up in their system, who now sees the truth and realize they gave their life to the system, but still they don't like what you're doing because they don't want to realize that they got to get all the way to the end of the line and start all over again. To hell with them. Our life depends on it. How many of us have still yet to die so we can wake up? Ain't no matter waking up. If you're not awake by now, stay in the bed and stay sleeping. The few of us who are up and awake, we got something to do. Have no time to w oh, wake up, wake up. Let's convince some of those white people that we're not so bad. No. 
No, the system should have been changed if everybody was in this kumbaya thing. It don't exist. And these young guys run around with these other little girls. Negro, just because you got one of them girls sucking your dick, that does not mean the world has changed. And you think, oh no, I'm not part of this evil revolution. Yeah, because you're getting some good head and swallow from these chicks. Don't let sex rule, rule you. And if you're doing something, you should be with one of your own sisters. Anyway. I'm not saying sisters like your sister, same father. I'm talking one of your sisters. I'm not saying just use them for that, but be with them. I know adolescence and childhood and coming into manhood and the fumbling and enjoyment you do, but don't mess around with the enemy. Because when they get older, they don't want to see your ass. They have their curiosities. They have their daddy angers. So I'm going to go and mess with a black man to piss my daddy off. But then when they see you 15 years after that, you were 16, 17, and now they see you in society. They're going to act like they don't know you. Because they know the privilege they have, and they ain't going to give it up for you. And if they give it up for you on a sexual level, you better meet them somewhere far away in a different city so they can get that thing off and use you as the well-hung black man that you are and the well-hung black man that you were. Well, get me started. You know, take me about an hour to warm up anyway, but I got to get ready to go, y'all. Before I do, let me drop the link if anybody wants to say anything. I always extend that courtesy, so let me do that. I should have dropped it earlier. I, I had the... uh chat room i was kind of focused on what i was saying i just needed to do that put it down strong and um anybody want to say anything you know feel free to come on in let me go from the top of the chat room and just call everybody's name because you know i see when i get one of these kind of moves and i feel like i need to catch up anyway for me not doing the show yesterday i'm like yo i got to put it down it's like you you're down on the cards on the boxing match it's like yo you're behind on points, and this is the 15th round. If you don't win this round, you're going to lose. I'm like, yo, I'm going for the knockout. I'm going for the knockout. <laughs> yes, yes, Master Glam. That's the word, bozo. <laughs> I see it. Well, anyway, Broderick, of course, I spoke to you earlier. Brother Kwame, uh, yes. Monk Million, yes, you're here. I'm glad. Oh, 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 bozo. No, I thought that was another joke that I used. So, bozo, if you cool... Oh, wait a second. What? Black people always whining over anything. Well, you know what we need to do, Bozo? We need to stop whining and do to you what you do to us. You see what I mean? If every black man and woman in the country got a licensed weapon and joined the NRA, y'all would change them laws overnight real quick now, wouldn't you? Oh, whining? Oh, it's your time to whine when the earth shifts soon and balance comes you should be the one actually whining at nine percent of the population of the planet you are diminishing you are dying you know it's bad when the sun don't like you where you go you burn and now we have all of y'all on each other, against each other yes we have brother kwame we have brother i'm gonna and let you both have all of y'all on each other against each other. Turn, your, turn your thing down baba rasan and Kwame, something's wrong with your connection. You're on live. Talk to me. Your lines are open. What's happening, Brother Lance? My, my God, I'm over here enjoying myself over here in the motherland. And um, like I said, man, you know, when I left, there's a lot of people out there that were saying, oh, you can't go out there. You're running. You, get, you're, you know, there are a lot of people who said that, man. I couldn't believe it. You're running. You ain't going to change nothing from running. And I'm here. And now people see what I saw. I'm not running from anything. I came to where I belong, where my lineage, well, lineage is, because I'm a free black man. Talk to us, brother. It's all good. I'm glad. Uh, I like the topic you was talking about. Yeah. There's a lot of evil stuff going on. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It, it, it's 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 all over the world, really, but it's in different different ways. So you just have to have your head on the swivel. But there's some places you sh that you can rest a little bit better, you know, because in America this is just gonna increase even more, you know. And I'm still I'm here, but I'm thinking about over there because my my people are over there, and these are my people too. But you know, to kind of lead the way and influence and keep the spirit up because I know it can be tough. I know it can be challenging. You, sometimes you get the feeling that the walls are closing in on you 
And there's a lot of fear mongering going on also. So it's a mind game that we know the earth will go on. We know once those people are away from us and out of our midst soon, um, it'll be a better world. But we have to also uh, dismantle what they put inside of us as that destructive spirit. You understand that we perpetuate these things and continue going on. Let me just say something, Brother Kwame. Um, I don't know which one has the computer on this little feedback, but Kwame and Baba Rasan, your lines are open. Go ahead and talk, y'all. Hi, Kajo, how are you? Oh, I'm good, brother. Good I to hear from you, my brother. I yeah. said before the let me let y'all talk, but both of y'all go on and shoot it. Let me run to the bathroom real quick. Both of y'all drop your piece, and um, I'll be right back All in right. two minutes. Kajo. Yeah, okay. You can, go, you can go ahead, my brother. Yeah, um, I've listened to everything tonight. Yeah, and I'm not surprised. I mean, as African people, we need to grow up. Because the system, I mean, say, for instance, with people who live in Africa, they always show off, like, oh, going to, say, Britain or America, you've hit the jackpot. Yeah, well, that, that sort of crap, I don't buy that at all. I live in Britain, and we're catching hell in this, in this country, just as you, brother, are catching hell in America. Yeah, where the police keep on stopping and searching our people. Uh, I mean, our people keep on killing each other. Uh, also, I mean, when it comes to education, our young boys are excluded the most and they're discriminated as well by discouraging them that, oh, the only thing that they can do is sport music, which is crap. Because our boys, they have the skill and the ear to do things such as uh, engineering and architecture, but still, they, describe, they degrade them. Exactly. It's not a day, yeah. But also, we are to blame, our brother. We are to blame because if we don't unite, these people can do whatever they like to us. They can say all their nasty, belly crap about us because we allow it. Because we're not united. We always talk about all oh, the Jews, the Asians, the Chinese have got this and that, yeah. Yeah, because I'll tell you why they've got this and that. Because they look after each other and they don't care what people think about them. And they're right to be independent. It's about, it's, it's about telling us African people we should do the same. We're the first people on this earth. What's our excuse? Why do we need Europeans to tell us what to do? We, uh, we, we were the first people long before they came. And we, did, we could do our own thing without being told what to do by those who don't look like us. And when you go to, I mean, take for instance, when, I mean, it was a good thing that Kodro told me one time, yeah, about African in Ghana who foolishly were imitating things like Thanksgiving. What do you know about Thanksgiving? What do you imitate it for? Do you know what it was about? No, you don't. You just imitate it. I don't grab that even because you're distancing yourself from this, such fools like that. Exactly. But all, all that comes from programming and conditioning from generation to generation. Yes, sir. Yes, they, sir. They was, doing, they was doing a psyche job on our, mm, our, mm. our, our minds. You know? Yes. Once, once, yes. You take somebody, once you take somebody's culture away, once you take yes. somebody's language away, yes, sir. Then, then you create a new person. Oh yes, yeah. It's it's just like the Willie it's like the Willie Lynch syndrome, my brother. When they get, that, I mean, the, yeah. This is take for instance, they get the uh, anti brother to be against our self conscious sisters, and vice versa. And I mean, our self conscious uh, our anti sisters against. Self-conscious brothers. That is what we're, we're doing. Copy that. That's what we Lynch did. Brainwash African people to turn against each other. And we're still, and still, it's happening. It's still happening. How these wicked people can do so many things against us. They get, get like, it's true, like they get this picture of the so-called white boy Jesus to get us to be free against ourselves. No, I'm not going to worship someone's identity because it, it doesn't identify with me. I rather, I mean, I worship an identity that represents me, such as Mark Max. And Harry Tubman. Exactly. Yeah, they, they did a hell of a job on us, and that's why we're not unified. That's right. That's if, we right. Was, if, we, if we was unified here in America, if we was yes. unified over in Africa, everybody thinking the same way, they'd be gone. Oh, of course. We'll of wipe, course. We'll wipe them yeah. out one week. Oh, one that's week. That's true, my brother. If you go to any hole in the West, Exactly. Well, Jesus, and I ask myself this question: Why don't you identify? What put something identifies with you? If you like Martin Luther King, fair enough. He identifies you, despite he follows the same religion as you. But he would put that you put the white boy Jesus instead of Martin Luther King. 
See how brainwashed we are. Exactly. When I was when I was a little boy, I found out that white Jesus was fake because I yes. I, I, I was raised in you know in a Christian church yes. from a little boy. Yes. When yeah. I used to go to church, I'm looking yeah. at there ain't nothing but black people in here, but I see twelve white men up on the wall. Oh, <laughs> but, but it's just it's I just said, tragic. It's yeah, tragic. Something, yeah, something wrong with this. Oh, tell me about it, my brother. It's just it's just absolutely a misconception that we we're poisoned with. I was what I'm saying like you well, brainwash I went to so church. I was asking myself, where's my fellow Africans? We want to show it's just European. Where is us? If we put anything with Africans, I'm we come with that. Oh, you're teaching, you're blaspheming. See how brainwashed we are. And and even in their Bibles, you don't see no black people in the Bible. All the pictures are white people. And what no oh, white yeah. folks? What no white yes. folks? What so no white called folks? Last supper, you eat just whites. So what? called, what's it? Uh, what's it? What is the other one? So protect the violence is white. It's no wonder we're so because so lost, right? If we talk about our own people, you see, we get bored about this. We think someone, someone doesn't look like them. Oh, we be jumping, we be something talking about them, getting so excited. And I said to myself, "Damn, are you unhappy about yourself or something?" Because of what you are, I think you are. It's suicidal, right? Because those pictures in the Bible. Even in the Bible, they talk about Egypt, they talk about the Nile River. Thank you, thank you. Black thank people, you. Thank black, you. Black people were living in those lands. Wasn't no white folks. Oh, yes, we were living in those lands of Kevin <laughs> and, and Ethiopia. Yes, you're right. But they won't talk about that. They'll talk about so with Israel. But right. Israel, let me tell you this Israel is a, a country that practices racism and injustice, if you don't know. Wake up <laughs> and smell the coffee. In, in this stolen land. Yes, the stolen land. All that was uh, Egypt, Jordan, the, the so-called Middle East was ruled yes. by black people. Thank before, you. Before the and Roman, if you look at everything, everything, my brother, Africans here yeah, were the first migrant to certain places of the world. But I won't tell you that. I even it, it took me twenty-eight years to discover. I didn't even know that it was us Africans that migrated to this to where I am, Britain, long before the British people themselves had built this country. But I wouldn't talk about that. America as well. Exactly. And they went all, they went all over the world and just took our land. Everywhere they, all the countries they own now was was run by was inhabited by black people. Are you breaking up? Yeah, let, let me um just cracking a little bit. I'm going to wrap this down in a few minutes because, like I said, I got some artwork to do, another recording to do, but we're going to come back. I'll keep it around an hour every single day. And, so, and on weekends, we'll go like we did the other time, damn near five hours. On the weekend, if we do something long, fine, if we have enough participation. So thank you, Tommy and Baba, for coming on in. And um, if you want to all come into the chat room, uh, the conference line, Again, I'll flash it up. I'll be there in about an hour after I finish up doing what I'm doing with the artwork and stuff like that, because I'm coming back hard with that. And um, yeah. here's a number right here. There it is, 3215212515. And um, roll free. It's not a problem. Worldwide, if you want to go to the Landscurve app, um, just go to where it says conference line, hit that. And it'll give you a choice of calling in or joining in just as though you're, you're hitting a website. So you push the one where you just enter in without calling. And anywhere you are in the world, you can join into the conversation. Now, I want to say this, that the app has been working off and on in a sense, meaning that the different faces that I have for all those who have done shows and all the shows that are on a playlist, you'll go there sometime and it's like it just doesn't work. And it's like, what, what the hell is happening? Well, that company uh, is, is, is shutting things down by August 1st and they kind of messing around with people. So it's like, OK, you don't mind leaving the service. I got that app 10 years ago in 2013. Well, I'm going to go with a different company. And um, I was grandfathered in. I paid like a thousand dollars for it. They say, you give us a thousand dollars. You can have the app forever. But now they're closing down. But I found out it's the same company. So I'm going to have to start paying a good amount of that to keep it going. 
but it's going to be under a different uh, company. You might not notice it. It may look a little different because I'm going to build it myself again. I'm going to keep it looking similar, but it's going to have more features to it. So if you go into the app between now and August 1st, the bottom line is that certain aspects of it will work or will not work. By the first of this uh, month coming in, I'm going to work on um, in the first few days of the month, getting it over to the new company so that everything can work just fine. You know what I mean? So, yes, I'm going to salute and say so long. I'll see you all in a little while in the conference line. And um, I will come back with another recording on a laid back level, that new style. Not new. I've always done that every now and then. But I'm going to zone out on some things and, and just talk about it like that. And we'll be back tomorrow and tonight. But it's going to be constant. Now, tomorrow I have a few things to run and do uh, with Mr. Scurve. You know, we're doing the house and finishing things up. And um, I will be out early. So don't think I'm not going to do anything, but we're going to get some footage and come back in the evening again, which I keep forgetting that I'm four hours ahead of everybody on the East Coast. So it, it's not that bad. For me right now, it's 1227. My battery's still full. I'm going to knock this work out and I'll be on the conference line shortly. So thank you all for all that you do and all that you share, sharing the buttons, whatever, on um, the links and everything. We're going to keep on going. Um, what time? I, I'll say about an hour from now. Um, right now, it's got to be on the East Coast, 827. Let's just say about mm, 930 East Coast time, maybe a little more. But when I'm drawing, I can be there talking. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't have to, you know, I just put the headphones on and just stroke the thing and I'll find a way to show you what I'm doing right now. Uh, Mick Genre saw it and um, she saw it. I'll send it to you, Master Glam and a few others that are here. And um, I know I jacked it up, but she likes it. But anyway, I will talk to you all. There's a number to jot down, and you can always find it on the site, landscurve.com. And we're going to keep on moving forward. We're going to keep up the fight. Nothing's going to stop us. And we're just going to be strong in what we do and walk strong because we know at the end of the day that we're going to be the winner. And we are the winner. And we're the designated winner because we're supposed to be. This is our planet, and we do right by each other. For those who don't, you'll be diminished. See? All right, y'all. I will see you in a little while. Peace. showed up in our country telling us of a land filled with luxury he said black man follow me to america there you'll find more gold for your labor our four parents were tricked onto his boat since that time we've been wrestling with the gold we landed here in jamestown virginia 400 years to suffer so my friend it's easy to tell white man heaven is black man hell <laughs> When the slave master wanted to have some sport, he would heap on our parents' cruelties of the worst sort, burn them at stake, hang them on trees. His ears were deaf to our parents' pleas. Though you were pregnant, black woman, 
you pull the plow like a horse, like a dog, even a cow. He fill your womb with his wicked seed. His half white children you were made to breed. Oh, my friend, it's easy to tell. White man heaven is a black man hell. So called Negro, open up your eyes. Black man everywhere is on the rise. He has kicked the white man out of Asia, and he's going fast out of Africa with every ounce of strength and breath. His cry is give us liberty or give us death. The whole black world has their eyes on you to see what the so called Negro is going to do. So, my friend, it's easy to tell. Our unity will give the white man hell. God made a promise to Abraham. His seed would be a stranger in a foreign land. They would suffer and be afflicted. Four hundred years, but he would come and wipe away their tears. Our God and Savior, Allah, has come. He has declared the white man's day is done. He has given us a divine messenger. One prophesied to come, his name is Elijah. We now can stand up the whole world to tell. Our God has come to give us heaven. And take the devil in. Why are we called Negroes? Why are we deaf, dumb, and blind? Why is everybody making progress, yet we seem to be lagging so far behind? Why are we mistreated? Why are we in this condition, stripped of our names, our language, our culture, our God, and our religion? Here in America, all of our religious training has been gotten by the preacher. He has told us of a heaven way up in the sky that we can't enjoy now, but rather after we die. But all of the years that we're living, for us there's nothing but hell, pain, torture, and misgiving. Yet the Bible speaks of a heaven filled with material luxury, which the white man and the preacher has right here, so we see. So my friend, take it for what it's worth. Your heaven and your hell is right here on this earth. So let's check back into history, which rewards all research and tells us plainly. Before the white man gained entry to the east, he was living in the caves of Europe, a ravenous beast eating juniper roots and eating flesh raw till God sent Moses to civilize him and teach him the law. Then following Marco Polo, an explorer, he gained entry into Asia and Africa. From China, he took silk and gunpowder. From India, he took jute, manganese and rubber. He raped Africa of her diamonds and her gold 
From the Mideast he took barrels of oil untold. Raping, robbing and murdering everything in his path. The whole black world has tasted of the white man's wrath. So my friend, it's not hard to tell. A white man's heaven is a black man's hell. America, we were living in the east by the Nile River. We were living in luxury, enjoying freedom, justice, and equality. We wore silken robes and slippers of gold. We were the wealthiest and the wisest people, I'm told. Now we are the poorest of the poor. Nobody wants us at their door. So, my friend, it's easy to tell. White man heaven is black man hell. When the white man came to America, he told the Indian, I am your white brother. He said, Red man, I'll treat you the best. Yet and still he pushed the Indian further west with his white woman and fire water. With tricks and lies, he stole America, the original owner of this nation. Is cooped up on a reservation. So, my friend, it's easy to tell. White man heaven is black man hell. He needed someone to work the land. His back was too weak. He needed you, black man. So he commissioned. Sir John Hawkins to commit the world's most grievous sin to take a man who's born to be free and bring him down to slavery to sell a man as merchandise on his body put a price oh my friend it's easy to tell white man heaven is black man hell For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get it. 